Guys, the Mario movie just came out, and as you've seen, it's scoring very low reviews on sites like Rotten Tomatoes, so what gives? Why is that? I'm here to give you an overall spoiler-free primer on the movie, discuss these reviews, and ultimately let you know if you should go see it. When first seen on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie had less than a mediocre 48% score, certifying it as rotten. And as you know, Rotten Tomatoes isn't just one reviewer, it's an aggregate. It takes on a bunch of different reviewers, from different magazines, TV shows, publications, all around the media realm, puts them together and creates an aggregate based upon whether a review was positive or negative. And that's what makes the algorithm, in a sense, work. Basically, as time has gone on, more people have gone to seen it. The score has risen a little bit. It's currently at 55% at the time I filmed this video. Um, but if you see the movie and you're a fan of Mario and Nintendo, there is a lot you'll recognize. It's been said time and time again and noticed in all the trailers, but there are tons of Easter eggs in the film. Way more than you could ever imagine, even reaching far back into the Mario lore. Fortunately though, it's very fun. None of it takes away from the movie and it only adds, if anything. If you don't get the references, it won't feel like you're missing anything, and I feel like anyone even seeing this without much knowledge of Mario should still be fine. As for the score in the movie, it's a mix of taking tracks from the Mario franchise and reimagining them in a more orchestral and upbeat fashion, and they do an amazing job at it. Beyond this, though, they do wix in a selection of pop songs. Fortunately, less than other animated films, though they do feel out of place at times. And don't worry, there isn't a wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy scene, although there should have been. Just saying. It definitely could have been worse, though, and some of them fit in well. It's not too modern or current either, which feels a bit better since it's not a grab at whatever the hot thing is. Like, even one of the regular songs used in the film is from The Beatles, which is recorded before a majority of the moviegoers were even born. The voice acting was stellar. Even looking around online and seeing impressions from others, the consensus seems to be that even Chris Pratt kills it as Mario. They do allude to the difference in the accent in the film, and Chris Pratt puts in a lot of effort to really feel unique and make it feel like Mario. It just works somehow, and you don't even remember throughout the movie that it's him. Other characters are dead obvious who is voice acting them, but it's not a bad thing. Expectedly, Jack Black absolutely steals the show, really giving Bowser a personality that feels similar to his game, while mixing in a lot of Jack Black himself to build all this new villain into something that's so fun to watch. The movie is super fast paced, and it hardly ever feels like it drags on. The intro is perhaps a bit long by comparison, but once they kick in and the action, it's major scene after major scene after major scene. Tons of comedy and action, the later of which definitely has major Smash Bros vibes to it with how the characters fight. This all sounds positive, but what about these reviews? I'm going to read off some of these negative reviews and respond to them directly. The only limit to the imaginative potential of the Super Mario Bros. movie is what the filmmakers bring to it. Their imaginations, unfortunately, are very limited. Please, this is not the case at all. Besides the fact that they're pulling from a franchise that's basically 20 years old and a repeat of the dude saves the princess from the villain, they were able to take this premise, make it fresh, and give back a new story to many characters that feels right at home. The characters feel familiar, yet they have an all new breath of fresh air in them. I could list numerous examples of how the gags and references distract and detract from the story, but let's face it, people care more about a YouTuber's 100 easter eggs you missed from the Super Mario Bros. movie designed to please the content gods. It's not a bad idea, maybe I should make that. It's not a charmless movie, and in fact has a handful of things going for it, but it's a misfire on so many fundamental levels. Fun fact, Luigi actually does not misfire once in this movie, unfortunately. The miss makes the review actually factually wrong. Gradually, the very young skewing aesthetic, which might have been perfectly fine and acceptably silly for its intended audience, gives way to a mess of a movie that becomes increasingly dark and destructive. It's confusing to tell if this reviewer wanted to remain young skewing and silly or if it got too dark. I think it was a great balance of colorful and fun, uh, yet knowing when to bring up the action. If you keep it too much on bright happy times, people will complain it's a boring kids movie. And the movie is made in a way that's perfect for all ages and fans, and it doesn't get as dark as this reviewer makes it seem. Totally inaccessible for non-fans of the Super Mario game from Nintendo. Fans might even have a hard time with a non-existent, antiquated, and somewhat offensive story. Shocking misfire for Illumination, the only bad movie they've ever made. Really? The only bad movie Illumination's ever made? Somewhat offensive story. Okay, sure, I won't touch on it much since it's something not outright said in the trailers, and I want to, you know, spoil it. But the motives in the story still feel right at home with the source 
material of the Mario games, and it make, you know gives a super fun spin on all of it. Also, still no misfires. The much trailered, much hyped new animated feature is tedious and flat in all senses, a disappointment to match the live action version in 1993. Anyone trying to say that this Mario movie matches the 1993 Mario movie just flat out hates having fun. They're terrible at parties, trust me. When all is said and done, you know, this isn't the kind of movie that's going to be chasing Oscar nominations and Best Picture awards. Is the movie perfect? Not at all, but that's okay. It's incredibly fun and it feels near impossible for any fan of the games, uh, you know, to flower dislike, all without completely alienating non-gamers. It's a great introduction to the franchise, which is bound to happen since they definitely set up numerous different directions for sequels of the film. Now, should you go see it? Of course! Especially if you're watching my channel and you like Smash, just go watch it. Of course go watch it. At the end of the day, it's your choice to watch it or not and make your own opinions of it, but the movie is far from what the rotten reviews of it seem to be. I watch a lot of films, so trust me on this. When you go and see it, be sure to stick around for the, both the mid-credits and the post credit scenes. I'll say one last thing too. When it comes to any kind of media made for a video game, uh, you know, especially ones trying to stay true to the series, you have to understand that cinema is, in a lot of ways, the ground all medium like way for people to get entertainment. Not everyone is going to be playing video games, especially certain age groups, but almost everyone, every age group, every demographic is going to be watching a movie. You know why? Because you sit down and enjoy it. There's no input needed. You just sit down and you watch. I've been loving going to movies since I was a baby boy with my family and then watching everything critically acclaimed and nominated. I'm a, you know, when it comes to films, you know, I hate a bad film, but I can also understand when films take certain directions. And this Mario Bros. movie was definitely no exception to that. You have to make the most famous video game character in the world appeal to this vast new generation of people and also the relics of the old generation who might have grown up playing it. Maybe our parents grew up playing Mario. Maybe our, you know, for some of your grandparents might have done it at this point. Let's be honest, we're in the year 2023. Look, sometimes these risks are important to take and I appreciate Nintendo doing what they did with Illumination in this film. I'll probably go watch it a second time and you should too. If you have seen the movie, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it, or if you haven't seen it yet, comment what you think it'll be like, come back and update me after you've seen it. And as always guys, thank you for watching, stay hungry, and I'll see you next time.